Oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> so there you have it. Hi, it's Todd from Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here, and I'm back with Matt Easton. I'm Scully Gladiatoria, hi. So, thanks very much, Matt. And we have got another Weird Weapons one. We did a series, three or four of them. We should do more, actually. I'm sure we will do, yeah. And here we are. And the series is called Weird Medieval Weapons, where, simple thing, I've got a covered up thing, you know nothing about it, I hand it to you. And, well, first thing, guess what it is? Second thing. Right. Oh. Oh, it's pretty heavy. <laughs> oh my God. And then we talk about it. I need to work out a bit more. This is, so it's big. Yep. And I can feel what feels like a cross guard. Yeah. Right. So, the first thing I have to admit is the weird medieval weapons. We're about as far away from that as we could be. So, you right. ready? Okay. No idea. Is this modern? Is it fantasy? It's sort of modern. Oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> and there you are. Oh my God, it's huge. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so that is in fact, <laughs> that is in fact Cl <laughs> Clive Rosfield's uh, sword from Final Fantasy 16, which is out now, everybody. Right. It's a thing, isn't it? So when people ask me if I even lift, I can now say <laughs> I do. Yes. Wow. One of, the, one of the lovely bits of artwork that I was given to follow when I made this replica. Uh, so I've done this for Square Enix, actually, the makers of the game. Is Clive Rosfield just walking along casually with this in one hand? <laughs> <laughs> Different man to He you definitely man? actually. Because oh. I can't do that. Blimey, Matt, you're all right. right. <laughs> 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 How much does this weigh? <laughs> I actually haven't weighed it. Maybe we should weigh it. Whilst I'm looking for scales, Matt's still playing. Back in a minute. <clears throat> so it's a moment for both of us here. How much does it weigh? I reckon about 15 pounds. Ah, oh, you'd be about right, actually. So that's about um, seven, seven and a half kilos. So seven and a half goes 15, 18 pounds. Lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> so, first of all, what the heck is going on and why am I doing this kind of thing at all? Well, I used to do special effects, I used to do prop making, and then, you know, history just took over my world. And you know me for historical swords, weapons, videos. However, it's actually you, Matt, who put me onto this company. You recommended me to them. Yeah. And I got the contract to make this thing. So, so this is Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy 16. So this is the main hero called Clive, <laughs> um, which is a brilliant main hero name. Uh, Clive Ro Rosfield. 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 And uh, this is his sword. That is his sword, yeah. So um, basically I'll talk you around it because <laughs> not as everything as it seems, which is what, one of the reasons I wanted to do this video because it's quite an interesting thing. So we're going to start with simple construction stuff. So basically you can see here, in fact, that uh, the way the guard is constructed, um, there is a split line here. Well, you, as you can see from the original artwork, there isn't. But this comes down to, uh, well, computer games. Uh -huh. You don't have to worry when you're designing a sword in a computer game how it is actually constructed. Yeah. Um, so the problem is this whole blade element here actually enclosed the guard. So right. it just simply wouldn't have been possible to make it like that. Then the other thing is I, I work with machinery um, I don't really work with sort of handheld grinders or anything like that. So I can't bolt this to a bench and work on it. Oh. <laughs> now, <laughs> as you notice, for hours and hours that are required to actually make this thing, an 18 pound object is, it's actually really hard work for me to process it because also not only am I having to hold it, I'm having to work accurately. Right. And yeah. that's really hard when you get tired yeah. and you're starting to shake. In fact, this thing's a cheat. Yeah. It's hollow. So you, you right. know Ash, don't you? Yeah, Ash, the, Ash armorer. the armorer. Yeah. yeah. Great bloke. Um, great armorer. He made that section for me. Right, okay. So um, it's kind of like a so kind of like a car body essentially. It's a it's a steel fabrication over a yes. skeleton. Yes. So that's solid up to here. Then it's hollow. Uh -huh. Um and then these plates here, the natural thing when you look at it is that it would be cast as that form. That would be the the way you'd go about it, really. Yeah. Um but, you know, you just can't. I didn't want it solid, so I couldn't do that. So those are actually made of separate plates and then just sandwiched on, layered on, 
and then just welded into place as we go. What's funny is actually there's some antique swords that I've um, handled and, and, and owned that are not dissimilar construction to that from Indian, Indo-Persian weapons. Oh, really? So if we look, look at certain types of Indian uh, basket hilt uh, found on Kanda, for example, in Ferangi, they're often built up of sheets and they would normally be riveted together, um, sometimes forge welded. Mm. Um, but essentially you do end up with a box section. So you end up with something that's much bulkier than, you know, it's like a bit like hollow pommels, I guess, medieval pommels in a hollow, made up of sheets, essentially, so you end up with a blocky construction, mm. but it's not solid because it would be ludicrously heavy. Yeah. Sorry, it's splitting the tape. <laughs> 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 it is heavy. <laughs> it's, li it's literally splitting the table. Well, it's that's the power out. of Final Fantasy for you, isn't it? Um, but yeah, that, that's one of the interesting things, actually, that you see on European weapons particularly, and yeah. I'm guessing actually in other cultures as well, is that parts are not always solid. Mm, you, they absolutely. look solid, they're made to look solid, but actually they're, they're not, because otherwise they're carrying too much weight. Mm. And in essence, that's exactly what I've done here. Yeah. Um, and, and I honestly think if I was interpreting even as like an archaeologist you know if i was if final fantasy was a medieval manuscript and i was looking at it and going well that was a real weapon then it must have been box sectioned like that we know that certain weapons you know whether it's discs or rondel daggers or uh, certain types of pommel which have got hollow sections or indian basket hilts we know that historically people have made things like that so that would make sense mm. because if it was solid you couldn't justify the added weight. No. So. No, but also you get sort of like little weirdo weapons. God, this should so be a weird weapons in Mount Eastern. Like the telescopic rapiers. There, you yeah. heard it here first, people. Yeah. <laughs> I really want to play with one of those. They would be perfect for weird weapons. Make it happen, Todd. You heard it here first. <laughs> just going to leave it six months now. Can I just switch arms? Because I have to say, this is, uh, I think they call that a military press in, uh, in the gym. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> See who gets longest at it. <laughs> um, oh, nice. Yeah, if you rest it, I yeah, think yeah, that's, I'll do that. oh, that's cheating. It is cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Live as mega deltoids, I reckon. I reckon he does. <laughs> um, and we're coming up. Cylindrical grip. Yeah. Not a fan? No. Mm. I, I, so, you know, I, I often complain about cylindrical grips because I prefer a grip you can instantly feel which mm. direction the edge is pointing in. But I always have to caveat that with the fact that there are historical weapons with cylindrical grips. There's some Indian swords, there's certain types of axes. Quite a lot of rondels. Actually. Yeah, lots of little rondel daggers, which you could argue maybe the edge alignment doesn't matter so much with the rondel daggers. But well, there we are... sort of found that, didn't we, when yeah. we were looking at, at stabbing through metal with that yeah. rondel dagger. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so, yeah, I'm not personally a fan of cylindrical mm. grips, but they do exist in, in history. So, mm. Funnily enough, I was looking at this section, and you've constructed it as a box section, which is obviously the right way to, to make it, and down here is a solid blade. We have some, maybe, parallels with some of the specialised armoured fighting swords, um, where you have blunt sections of the blade up here, which are specifically de designed for gripping. And one of the things, if I can just take mm. it back for a second, one of the things I looked at this, this is almost set up perfectly for half oh, for sorting. Half sorting yeah. yeah. So that actually doesn't look massively different to some of the specialised armoured fighting swords mm. in Talhofer, Codex Wallerstein, things like this. And we do have surviving examples. There's two in Vienna, um, in, the, in the arsenal in Vienna there. So the fact that you've got this um, sort of ridge here, you could say that that's sort of, a hand stop or hand protection mm. um so i kind of actually i think this is within a you know if it, within a specific fantasy scenario you could understand how a weapon like that might develop and if it's maybe for you know killing slaying giant powerful creatures and stuff and you need a super heavy weapon and you are yourself super strong stronger than us <laughs> then you know an 18 pounds two-handed sword that you can half sword with and actually when you're half sorting with it it's not too bad at all it's actually quite nimble oh you're making it up <laughs> <laughs> well no honestly as you know half sorting it's yeah okay it's heavy it's heavier than any pole axe i've mm. ever held but it's into that kind of realm holding it two-handed by the grip oh my gosh that i mean it's if you want to imagine if you pick up a 14 pound sledgehammer feels quite like that but people use 14 pound sledgehammers so 14 pound sledgehammer is that long yeah that's true this that's is, true you know yeah. you've got different leverage here although what's the point of balance on this oh oh I, actually big... that's actually about where you'd expect <laughs> so it does actually balance where well, you'd expect a sword to balance that might also <laughs> 
my God, I'm good on that. <laughs> Who'd have thought that? But that might actually be something to do with the fact that the guard um, started out as a block of steel uh, seven centimetres by five centimetres thick. Right. Um, so that might be part of it. And but then yeah. well, you, come, you come down to the end here and you have actually have, obviously, for a blade of that kind of weight, and I think you could say it's got blade presence. That sort. <laughs> it's got everything present. Um, that the pommel is actually visually quite small. Yeah. In, in, if you're trying to logicalise yeah. this realm in this game, you obviously have a lot of solid mass here. I think either that has to be something super light or super hollow. And maybe, in the converse of that, that the pommel is actually super dense. So, you know, maybe, maybe this is like super diamond titanium or something, mm. and that is depleted uranium or whatever it may be. I mean, theoretically, you could make these hilt parts and some sections of the blade out of something like uh, aluminium, couldn't mm. you? And, and that would drastically bring the weight down. But of course, it wouldn't be as strong as, as steel. Mm. Or, But if they had a material which was as strong as steel, but as light as aluminium, then that changes the parameters completely. Yeah. One thing I wanted to say about the pommel is I actually really love this ridge at the oh, back really? here. Yeah because it's such a weighty blade actually to stop your <laughs> to stop your hand slipping off the mm. end that ridge actually slips between the between the fingers and it just gives you an extra little hand stop at the bottom because not being an especially mm. large pommel it'd be quite easy for your hand to just slide off yeah. the end otherwise so i really especially like how that locks swing it be yeah strange. yeah yeah absolutely with some momentum yeah, yeah. so i really like how that locks in there actually mm. i'd be quite a fan of that on any other sword um, oh, that's interesting yeah but it, I mean, I suppose it's something that we'll never know, actually, is the sword designer or the team of designers who put this together, were they just designing something that looked cool or were they actually giving thought to function? Or, you know, these, these are the things that we'll never really quite know. Um, because you could argue, again, that that gap there is actually fantastic for blade trapping. It really <laughs> is. Yeah. And that obviously, as far as you're concerned, has a good function, that ring there. Yeah. Was it there just because it's pretty and it looks cool? Or did they, literally, did they go, oh, that'd be a great place for the last two fingers? Um, have you ever seen, there's something called the Spear of Destiny. And so that's... Not a, the band. <laughs> no. So that's a Carolingian lance that was, um, came oh, to be so, le believed was the one that lanced yeah, yeah. Jesus on the cross. But they added a load of sort of cladding to it, essentially. And what's interesting is this almost looks like what was a conventional big longsword mm. that's had... It's a bit like Spear of Destiny cladding that's been added onto it for some forgotten arcane religious or ceremonial purpose, mm. you know. So being a typical archaeologist, I'm going to say this definitely has ritual... <laughs> uh, ritual... Ritual uh, function. Oh, okay, yeah. right. So I think this so is maybe... a bearing sword. Yeah, so, you know, I think within the Final Fantasy uh, kind of universe, I could say, yeah, I could imagine where this might be... A, a relic sword that had things added to it mm. and was maybe in a temple and then came back into use again as a, mm. you know, you could definitely make up a backstory yeah. to this. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure, that, I'm sure there is a backstory. Can you hold it now? Because I'm getting no, exhausted. I, I have absolutely, <laughs> I've absolutely patented the way I'm going to hold this thing. Um, I don't need to go to the gym for like a week now. Mm. <laughs> no, but I suppose uh, another thing that I'd like to highlight actually about this is, is it's a little bit grubby, it's a little bit dinged, it's a little bit... But that's actually deliberate. So I specifically asked them how they wanted it treating. Yeah. So did they want it absolutely brand new virginal? Did they want it a little bit used? Did they want it like it had saved the universe 20 mm. times? And they went for the little bit used option. And, you know, so I aged it down. You know, and I aged it down with quite a selection of chemicals, actually. Ferric chloride, peroxide and salt is a really good, mm. nice, aggressive one. Mm. And you just scrub it in and wash it down, clean it off. You don't just put one colour on a guard that's aged now. That's fine if it's 30 metres back at the back of a fight scene. Okay. If it's being looked at, it's, it's about layers. Because right. life is about layers. It's about something happened last Tuesday, but something happened four months before that. Yeah, yeah. And you've got to build it up. The damage and wear that it builds up over time is all from different causes and, uh, and at different times, like yeah. you say. So one might be a splash of blood, one might be some rain. You know. Exactly that, yeah. yeah. And it just gives, ironically more reality to the object and it looks like a real weapon it's made out of real steel and it's you know it's made of uh, the materials i mean the leather wrapped yeah. grip is made completely traditionally um with you know it looks like a, a top-end reproduction medieval sword so it, it's 
it looks like a real thing instead of a lot of props we're used to seeing that look like they're made of, of plastic or, you know, I, modern materials. I think one of the reasons that I moved away from special effects and, and prop making, that kind of thing, is um, I sort of didn't have interest in the materials. I love yeah. real materials. I yeah. love metal, you know, steel, brass, leather, wood. Yeah. Um, you know, those are the things that I like working with. Yeah. And so if they come to me, you know, I could have made this out of... You know, polyurethane, sprayed it silver and gone, there you go. Yeah. Told no interest for me. Yeah. And, and actually, I think as well, the signature of the maker is different because you work with steel and you get a steel object out of it that's been made of steel. You, you work with plastic and you can kind of make it look like steel, but the, the signature of what you've done isn't steel. Yeah. You know? And I'm such a big believer in, in the subconscious and... You, you might know nothing about making stuff, but you just know it's not made of steel. And, you know, that one, you know it's made of steel. You know. And I wouldn't want to get hit by that. <laughs> I think you would, you would stay hit. Uh, I think you would stay hit. So there you have it. Um, Final Fantasy 16 sword. Definitely a weird weapon. But next time you see the weird weapon one, we'll come back with something medieval again rather than fantasy. Maybe a telescopic rapier, although I think that's quite a challenge. But we'll come up with something. No, I've nailed it. You'll see in due time. Anyway, see you guys. Thanks very much. <laughs> Cheers. Well, I guess you thought that was it, and so did I. But I've realised something very cool indeed. I took the contract to make the Final Fantasy sword, and I knew all along that it was going to get displayed in the Tower of London, but I just didn't think about it. I just didn't think about it. I was too worried about the sword itself, making that. But I have just seen a promo film about where it's getting displayed and how you can go see it and all that kind of stuff. It's in the Tower of London. My work is in the armories where the kings of England's armour and weapons is stored. The best armourers, medieval armourers of, of England and of big chunks of Europe, made the stuff that is in that room. And my work is there too now. And for a month. However, that is just brilliant. So, grinning from ear to ear, because for me that is such a big deal. But go check this promo film out. It's very cool. Anyway, I'll see you again. Bye.